Belinda Thurman, before we talk about Batman and Robin, I understand you are in the middle of quite a schedule on both sides of the ocean. Talk to me a little bit about the kind of pace you have to maintain sometimes and what's going on in Great Britain. Uh, well, I just started production on the Avengers for next summer, and um, and I finished Les Miserables before that, so I've, I've had a pretty vicious uh, pace, I must say. And is that at all typical, or does it just come in spurts like that? It tends to come in spurts. Most actors will tell you they have long, dormant periods, and then they get very, very busy, and they never have enough time. So. And during the dormant periods, how do you pace yourself then? Um, that's the hard part. Work is easy. Downtime is, is confusing. So, <laughs> but I, I tend to have a good yeah. time and go home. Look at this image behind you here. My goodness, Poison Ivy. Does every little girl sit in front of a mirror with mom's makeup and maybe imagine outrageous conceptions like this? <laughs> Is that almost what it felt like for you? It would probably take a child to think it up. Yeah, it, so exactly. <laughs> I think that's where the Batman images come from, basically, uh -huh. that sort of childlike imagination. And what was the most demanding part of this makeup day to day? Um, well, the makeup is pretty straightforward. Uh, the, the wigs, the construction of the wigs, the adding of the sculpture on top of the head would, would take a while. But uh, It's fun to watch that appearance of yours change and develop throughout the film. Mm -hmm. If people are, we should alert people to track that because you do change all the time. Well, our thought was, you know, basically to take it in the way that she goes more and more mad. Yeah, exactly. As she escalates and becomes more, uh, you know, power hungry and insane. Let's talk about this character. She is a kind of eco-terrorist gone berserk, if you want to explain. Uh, she is. She's a mother nature uh, woman scorned. So, <laughs> so it's sort of a mad uh, comedic idea based on, based on that. Yeah. And you want to do nothing less, I guess, than with Mr. Freeze's help, just sort of decimate the Earth's flora and fauna for a while? Well, over the course of the film, she becomes disappointed in mankind's uh, point of view on mm -hmm. protecting the planet, so she decides that they have to go. <laughs> and, uh, Men don't count. It's yes, the vines. Precisely. <laughs> I'm wondering if we are really all that far away, maybe, from some of the fringe elements of the eco-terrorist groups out there. Any comments on I that? I don't think so. I think this is a completely unrealistic portrayal, mm -hmm. and uh, most people who are out there for the environment are doing it for the sake of saving mankind because mm -hmm. the earth won't be able to support us if we don't support it. So I think it's a very important point to make that uh, this is a comedic, funny, extreme, far out Batman, you know, concept. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely no realistic relation to any people who are struggling to protect the earth. Now, as far as the way you speak and handle yourself as Poison Ivy, uh, are you familiar? It looked to me like there were lots of obvious allusions to things like Blonde Venus with Marlene Dietrich when you take off the gorilla head. Yeah, Joel definitely, I think, was into the Blonde Venus image. I mean, that's directly from Blonde Venus. So, um, uh, yeah, there's many. I mean, if you look at the Batman film, I mean, the, the, the references are endless. Yeah. You know, there's constant lines that are references to everything from TV commercials to classic movies. When you look at your face in the reflection of the blade, too, that's from Dishonored. <laughs> Another Dietrich picture. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. That I didn't realize. I thought, of that. I thought that squad. was funny, actually. It's before oh, that's she goes right. To the I have seen that in Dishonored. Uh -huh. I guess maybe it was in the back of my head. I don't know. And was there also maybe a little more, uh, more than a little Mae West inflections in your voice? Absolutely. Mae West was a major inspiration yeah. um, for me in every way in this part. When you grow up as an actress, are these the kinds of images, role models that are ingrained into your sensibilities for any actress, maybe? I think probably. I mean, I, I spent my you know childhood on days when I was sick home from school watching the you know the movies that they used to run all the time, all afternoon long, old great classic black and white movies. Yeah. And uh, from there, did I you know my imagination began to vividly spin and absorb yeah. these extraordinary women. And this is one of, the, one of the first parts I've had that I've ever been able to kind of go as far as you know a real old great vaudevillian uh, villainous could go. Well, I, I'm name dropping here, but Meryl Streep once told me that there is a lot of fun in just emerging from behind the bushes and yelling boo to just really <laughs> go for it. Uh -huh. And was that an appeal to you that you knew from the word one would be there, or did you just gradually get accustomed to that full um, throttle? I, well, I think some things were gradual and, and other things, and, and with the character I was ready to go all the way with it as soon as I kind of clicked into figuring out how I was going to do it. 
and um, and it was just so much fun just to make it as extreme and as yeah. naughty as possible. With uh, just a little bit of time left, can you take us to a day or a scene or a set where you just looked around you and said, what surreal world is this that I've got myself into? Some oh, moment. Every day on Batman is a day <laughs> that you say, oh my God, isn't yeah. this extraordinary? And um, that's the wonderful thing about it. You know, the, the world is the oyster of Batman. There's nothing they can't do and there's nothing they won't do. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's so much fun in it that uh, really almost every day on that set would have been a spectacular vision. And I think, too, the relationship with Robin especially is we need to know that about Robin's vulnerability mm -hmm. and your own powers. What is that dust? You do need to know that. We do need to. <laughs> what is that dust that you've got that you blow? Her pheromone dust. Pheromone. It's her major tool. You know, to, <laughs> it's really that that manipulates people the best. She drugs them, basically. People who've never heard that term suddenly will be hearing it all the time as a result yes. of this movie. The, the, the e eco-terrorist space age uh, Mickey. <laughs> So to speak. <laughs> Finally, now, when do you head back to finish the Avengers? Uh, Sunday. Good, great. No, no rest for the wicked here. No rest for the wicked. No. And working with Ralph Fiennes, just one quick comment. Um, it's wonderful. We've just begun, and, and we're having a very good time with it. Mm -hmm. You've seen the series, of course. Of course. All right. It's been a pleasure to meet you, Uma Thurman. Thank you. And we're talking about Poison Ivy yes. in Batman and Robin. And I'm John Tibbetts for KCTV Five in Los Angeles.